Okay guys, so I'm going to do a quick little just brief, this are the paints I'm going to play with today. And what we're going to do is, um, not tons of information, I have some paint brushes here, I have some small, mediums, and large, I have an angled um, shader brush right here, an angled shader brush, and I'll show you what to do with that. Um, and then just some smaller, small, medium, and large. I'm going to work on, if you look right here, I don't know if you can see it, I'm going to have to move some stuff, a circular piece of wood. This is going to be my substrate, but you guys can use whatever it is um, you'd like to use. Just as long as it's enough, it works with acrylic paint. Some people say that you should sand and seal with gesso. Some people just leave it like this. I'm going to leave it like this because it's a smooth surface and I've worked on wood enough to know that it's totally fine. It might take an extra coat of paint, but I'm okay with that because I don't mind. Um, and then these are my paints. I'll put a list of the colors in. I'm not sure if I'll use all of them, but I pulled a selection because what we're going to do today is I'm going to paint a succulent. A succulent. And I'm going to show you a couple from back in the day, a couple of my toll, actually one really, um, one of my toll painting strokes. I know some of you out there um, know toll painting from a long time ago, but it, uh, that technique will come in handy for what it is I'm going to do today. So just wanted to pop in and say, yay to our first class of acrylic paint, how to Tuesdays acrylic paint part one. Um, I really like mixing it up. I don't plan on doing a portrait. I know that mostly my main focus on my page next generation art is portrait art, but I dabble in so many different things. So I do, I will, I do plan on having a portrait piece, but, um, uh, at some point within the four, next four weeks, but I do like to mix things up and show you guys different things. Might not be everybody's cup of tea, but it's something that I enjoy doing and I hope to pass on something new and different to you guys. So, um, please have fun please I ask you know give challenge yourself do something new do something different you might know who knows you might fall in love with succulents I actually didn't you know, asked me five years ago I'd have been like succulents no way but now kind of in love with them so um, I've painted some in watercolor and I'm gonna paint some in or paint it in acrylic and see where we can go from there it's gonna be a little pop art style a little combo between toll and pop art I love both so it kind of just lends itself to how I've developed my techniques. Speaking of techniques, um, there's so much stuff out there to know when it comes to uh, acrylic painting and I by any means am not a professional acrylic painter. I have used it most of my life but I have learned my own hacks and techniques on how to do stuff. I will give you a few tips on things that I've learned. I've done some research to give you guys some feedback but this first week we're just gonna have fun because we just wrapped up Christmas and life has been crazy and New Year's is about to hit in two days or three days two days I think from today no tomorrow actually when this goes up so um yeah my life has been really full so I'm just gonna have some fun painting with acrylics a succulent plant with a little bit of technique in there and then we'll learn more each week okay I love you guys thank you for being here please share your piece um in the post are uh, posted on Next Generation Arts. Join us there if you're not a member. Join us over at Next Generation Arts so that you can share your version of my work. And if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the comments. Any questions or suggestions, I am open to it all, okay? Happy New Year, my friends. May this next year be exactly artistically what you hope it to be, that your goals are met and that you surpass them beyond what your expectations were and you've discovered new new materials and new techniques and made new friends and joined awesome communities and that support each other and are there for each other artistically and you know friendship wise it's nice to be in a tribe of like-minded souls so and that again just a shameless plug next generation art is that page next generation art on facebook generation is spelled j-e-n like jenny but generation art um yeah, so join us. Please have fun, you guys. Happy New Year. Bye. Okay, so I'm like I said before, I'm going to do a little toll painting. This is one toll painting stroke. And I'm going to take, this is my angular shader brush. Notice that it has a slant, angular slant to it. I'm going to take one side of it and load it with my dark green and the other side of it and load it with my light green. So I'm going to load it. This is what a technical term, you're loading your paintbrush. 
So it looks like that. Dark green on one side, light green on the other. And in my picture, the light green is on the outside. This is like the, or it goes in like this. So the center piece is going to be darker. So I'm going to actually turn this so it's like this. And I'm practicing on a, a small little board. So look at that one fell swoop. And I've got, I'm going to load it a little bit more with my dark. One fell swoop and I've got the gradation from the light to the dark. So the centerpiece, because it goes like this, it angles in, like it's like a V shape. So the center would be getting less light. The edges and the outside would, because it sticks out, will be receiving more light. So I'm gonna load again. Load again, do it one more time. Load one corner, the, the tip, and then the other side. I'll show you again. You can see it's loaded on both sides. Then I'm gonna flip it and put the center again. This time I'm going to grab a little bit more light. Because I was running out. Come back this way. Kind of looks like a pickle right now, doesn't it? <laughs> and then Take a little bit more of the green, come back in the center here. Take a little bit of the brown. I'm going to use a little bit of burnt umber, just a tiny bit. Load just the tip of my brush right there because I want that shadow to be a little bit darker. But I can't load three colors at once. And I want to work acrylics. If you have not worked with acrylics before, they dry fairly quickly. So you have to move kind of fast, especially if you're working on, well, any surface, paper, wood, whatever it is, fairly absorbent. But that's also the beauty of acrylics, at least I think, is that, oops, um, it, because it dries so fast, if you don't like something, you can dry it and paint over it. Acrylic, you can just paint over and over and over again. You can't, you, you can't go wrong. You know, with watercolors, they can get muddy. Acrylic paint can't. You can even go so far as once it's all dry, just get some gesso and paint the whole thing over again, completely white, and start from scratch. Draw out your image and start from scratch again. Can't go wrong. Okay, so I'm going to come back in a little bit more with my center. That that burnt, it's just burnt umber. And I made it just a tad darker in the center here. And now to highlight it, because I want to make sure that that's obvious in my picture here. Oh, uh, actually, I'm not going to do too much of that. You'll see it when I do my speed up. I just wanted to show you that technique. I wanted to show you the loading. I'm going to clean my brush again real quick. And then I'm going to show you again. I took my angled, angular sh shader brush, angular shader brush, loaded this one side and loaded the other side. So now I have a dual loading. I wish I could go three, but I can't. My brush may be if it was a little bit bigger, but I can't. And then you just lay it down wherever the coordinating color is supposed to be. And look how quick I did that. In a matter of minutes, I was covered a whole space. And voila, you've got your beginnings of a pickle, which will become a cactus. <laughs> so there you go. That's how it works. It's loading the brush. It's a toll painting technique. I'm sure it's other called something else in other techniques, but I know it as a toll painting technique. I loaded the brush and I laid down my pigment, i.e. paint colors. All right, there we go.
Okay, so you guys have seen me do some layers here. <laughs> There's that word again. I should get a shirt that says hashtag layers. Because um, that's all I talk about. So you saw me do the toll painting, the loading of the brush. And then that was like my flat coat, my base coat. And now I'm building it up with the layers so that I can get the definition and depth in between each section of the cactus itself. So I've gone in with some, like, um, what colors have I used? I've used mistletoe. Mistletoe. I've used sage green. I've used burnt umber. And I've used black. And I have used... This is just a yellowish green, the technical term, yellowish green, or yeah, yellowish green. And then I've actually, ah, I've actually used a little bit of turquoise, not much, but a tiny bit of turquoise. Like, and I'll probably go back in again. You'll see some right here for a little bit of highlights. Um, I'm gonna still keep playing with this, but I want to do a little demo here, just a tiny bit, because I want this section to look like it's on top of this section. And I just got my nail in it. So I'm going to come in with some black. Just a tiny bit. And this is a size zero. It's a flat size zero. The unfortunate thing is, I don't know, this is something that we deal with when I, at the studio I work out a lot, um, is that everybody, every brand makes a different looking size zero. You would think across the board it would be the same but it's not so just shoot for size zero um okay so now i laid the black in and now i'm going to go in with actually not that color i'm going in with a color that is a combo of mistletoe the mistletoe green and the burnt umber combo because i want to i don't want that to be oh, super intense i'm going to go in with a coat just a light coat and then just soften that up a little bit so it's not such a hard line. Just a suggestion. We're looking for just a suggestion. I'm going to come up here. You should be able to start seeing the pieces look like they're getting a little dimension to them. They're getting a little bit of dimension. And the, the top pieces are starting to look like they're popping off putting a little black around these guys because I want this branch right here holding this flower to pop out some. Uh, I want that to a little bit darker in here. A little bit darker. These are what would be considered my shadows. I'm laying in my shadows right now with the black and I don't want it to be so super harsh black I don't mind a little bit of black showing because you know there is some shadow but like I've said before shadows are not just black there's all kinds of layers levels of black grays light grays dark grays and mid tones also if you're working on wood I don't know if you saw at the beginning but if you're working on wood and you didn't prime your wood with gesso first if your brush is really wet and you lay color down it goes whoosh, it soaks right into the wood grain it's fine. I don't really care. Just pick it up real quick with a paper towel or your finger or whatever. Because you're going to paint around it. What I'm getting at is like I, I laid it down and it spread past the line that I'd drawn. It's fine. Just pick it up. You're going to paint around it anyways. If you're not going to paint and you like this natural look, you can just take your cactus out a little bit further and um, cover that spot. No biggie. But try to not have a soaking wet brush. It's not like watercolor. Okay, so in here I'm going to pull back some of this black. Not all of it, because I like that it's there. I like the suggestions. I like the depth that I have going right now. I'm going to come up here. Add some here. This is black again. Underneath these petals, because the petals are sitting on top of the cactus. And remember, there's another thing I should put on my shirt. Where over two things overlap, there is a shadow that's cast. Okay, so... I don't like this that's happening. So I clean my brush and I'm gonna go back in with mistletoe and burnt umber, my little combo there. And I'm gonna soften it out. You know how I talked about the small strokes with my uh, colored pencil, the small circular strokes? I just realized I do the same thing with my paintbrush when I'm trying to smooth out that edge. Hmm. It's interesting how everything starts to overlap, huh? 
I think I said from the beginning that my watercolor work, I paint like a, an acrylic artist with my watercolor work. I always have because I knew. Well, I, I've done both actually for a very long time. They just all kind of serve the same purpose. And again, like I said at the very beginning, these are tricks that I have taught myself because I did not and have not taken any kind of professional acrylic painting class. So there's too much water on that. Um, so I figured out how to make it work for myself. So now I'm going to go to this side and do a little bit of um, shadows on this side. I'm really digging how this looks right now, by the way. In the camera, it looks really cool. I hope it looks good to you guys. You just never know. With the camera being above, sometimes it's hard to tell. Because my angles are all off and they're wonky. You know what I mean? So before that dries completely, I'll do a little bit at a time. So I don't just remember I told you acrylic dries fairly quick. And then the brush. The brushes hold the water. They soak up into the barrel. You think you've had a dry brush and bam, a big old droplet comes out. Super fun. Yee! I love how this looks. I love it. Okay. It's gonna come up here that back a little. What I mean by that is I'm pushing back the black a little. Actually, I want a little bit of black up here. Because I want it to look like oh, in here too. I'm get a little bit of dark here. My brush is too wet. Yup, my brush is too wet. And this will pop even more once I start to add the color for um, my, lead, my petals, the petals of the cactus flower. Let's go back in, soften this up a little bit. A little circular, okay. A little circular scrubby. Okay. I am digging it. Now, since the cactus has a little bit of highlight, I want to go a little bit of Monica in my life. Every time I say that. Okay, so um, it has a little bit of highlights around the edges. This is my uh, yellow green that I'm going in with. I'm kind of, I'm doing what's called a dry brush, where my brush isn't super wet, and I'm picking up some paint, but I'm not expecting to be like a full solid lay down of color. It's actually, let's see if I can do this. I'll do it on this. It's actually, can you see that? It's just to suggest, no, I didn't, I just loaded my brush a lot. I'm taking up little bits actually, that was too much. So it's just a suggestion. It's like, um, it's hitting all the raised parts of the wood where the part has, um, the grain of the wood on the surface of it, as opposed to going down. And it's just enough to give a hint of color. A hint of color, and I want to do a little bit more here, a little bit more here, and then some here. Adding these colors here will make these elements pop for sure. Look at that. Just adding that little bit and it pops. Come down here. This whole side gets a little bit more pigment. And this right here gets some. There's something about painting succulents. I don't know. They're they're so fun. 
I think because they're, they're forgiving, I want to say. They, um, uh, you can't really mess it up. I think that's part of it. And they're so, because they're nature based, they're so organic to what, you know, what they look like. There's no two alike is what I'm getting at. So you can't really mess it up. But I love doing them. I, I really enjoy doing these, um, succulents. And you guys, I will put the reference photo in the, um, or the direct the instructions of the post and you can use that or you can find your own it's totally up to you I think this is so much fun at the very end my last part will be I'll add all the little um what are they called <laughs> the spiky things okay totally drawn a blank yep needles there we go <laughs> okay it's been a long holiday <laughs> okay so this will pop out more too when I add my background color so there you go guys I just wanted to show you a little bit of how to shadow bring out that depth push back the shadows and pull up the lights yeah I'm pretty pretty pleased with the way this is turning out Pretty pleased indeed. I'm gonna add a little bit, make sure there's no water. Add a little bit of, see a little bit of Monica in my life. See, it's in your head now, huh? Mm-hmm, you're welcome. Okay, so now I'm going to pause again and go into fast forward. Well, not pause. I'm just going to keep painting, but it'll turn into fast forward. Okay? Yay!